Let's bring in former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Bill Taylor. Thank you so much for joining us as this situation unfolds. Uh, you were, of course, the U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine. If you still held that position, what would you be doing right now and saying to the Ukrainian leadership? I would be saying that uh, that uh, now is the, the time uh, to be steady. Now is the time to be prepared. Uh, now is the time to prepare your nation, Mr. President, uh, for a, a very testing time. Uh, remarkably, President Zelensky has been steady and firm. Um, uh, President Putin has tried to intimidate President Zelensky. And President Zelensky, a young politician, um, has not been intimidated. Um, he has been holding firm. He's tried to keep his nation calm and determined and resolute. And as your reporters have uh, have indicated, the, the Ukrainian people are ready. They are. They know that they've got this enormous force on their border. They know that they've got uh, that the Russian military is larger than the Ukrainian military. But they also know that the Ukrainian military is motivated. It is motivated to defend its land. And so President Zelensky is doing the right thing, and we should be there supporting him as he does that. And given where we are right now, what do you think an invasion would look like? How far might the Russians go into Ukraine? Do you think all the way into Kyiv? If they were, if he were, it's really Mr. Putin's decision, rational, um, he would evaluate the costs and benefits of doing that. The costs for Mr. Putin are, are going to be enormous if he should try to go all the way to Kiev. That would be the big invasion. Um, his military is capable of doing that. His military, however, will face a determined Ukrainian military who will exact a very high price. The Ukrainian military will be able to make this very bloody for Russians. It will be bloody on the Ukrainian side. If President Putin sends his military all the way to Kyiv in an attempt to overthrow this government, overthrow the Zelensky government, it will be clear to the world what this is. This is an unprovoked attack. There is no rationale. President Putin has not been able to find any rationale to do this. So if he goes all the way to Kyiv, indeed, if he just attacks outside of that small little enclave that he recognized two nights ago, um, that will be a demonstration that he has invaded Ukraine and the world will see. The world will see that people are dying, that Russians are dying, that Ukrainian civilians and military are dying for no good reason, no uh, unprovoked attack. This will be this will be a war crime. Um, and he will try to over if he does try to overthrow this government, um, he will face a determined fight first from the Ukrainian military and then from the Ukrainian people and his soldiers who will be trying to subdue the Ukrainian people will be will be picked off one by one in villages and towns and and forests and uh, streets around the country. It will be miserable for those Russians trying to occupy Ukraine. It'll be very tough. Lindsay. And what do you think of the Biden administration's handling of this crisis up to this point? Has the U.S. taken enough action to stop what look, is looking like an imminent invasion? Of course, there's a limit to what we can do. Ukrainians know that. Ukrainians know that they're on the front line, that they are defending themselves, their country by themselves. They know they're actually defending Europe from a, Russia attack, a Russian attack. Uh, so they know they are there. They know that President Biden is not able to send troops. They've not asked him to send troops. So what has he been done? I think he has handled this well. He has is, he is highlighted and, and spotlighted uh, everything that we've been able to find out about what the Russians have in mind doing. He's been able to rally the alliance, and not just the NATO alliance, but all of Europe, indeed all of the Western world, including Japan and Australia and, and others. So this has been a major diplomatic effort, a major political effort, a major military effort to provide weapons and support, ec economic support, as well as military support to Ukraine from not just the United States, but from other allies as well. So we've, he, President Biden has done as much as he can. Um, he's, got, he's got more in his bag. He's got, he's got another round 
of very severe sanctions that he can roll out. And they, that will come if President Putin makes his bad decision. We've been hearing for days that many Ukrainians are going about their everyday lives, shopping, going to pubs. Do you anticipate that there's going to be a major shift in the coming hours or, or days? Lindsay, I think there has been a shift. Uh, I've talked to people in Ukraine, I've been, been back and forth. I've got friends there, of course. Um, in the past 24 hours or so, I think there has been a shift and people are grimly determined. Um, they're making preparations. Um, they are prepared to defend themselves, but I think that shift has taken place. Uh, just in the last 10 seconds, do you think that there is a sanction that could stop Putin in his tracks? You know, I don't think there's a sanction that could stop him in his tracks. I think what might stop him in his tracks is the realization that the Russian people are not behind this war. The Russian people, in particular, when they have body bags coming back into their towns for burial, they will not support him. And th this could destabilize his regime. Ambassador Taylor, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.